don't mess with the rogue. A fearsome fighter in her own way, there is no denying that Rogue has been the strongest member of nearly any X-Men lineup that she has ever been a part of. Well, for someone who is capable of stealing powers and memories simply by touching and putting the very life of the person that she has touched at complete risk in the process, she does epitomize the very phrase, I do not like to be touched. A creation of Christopher S. Claremont and Michael Golden, the character of Rogue first made an appearance in the 10th issue of Avengers Annual back in the year 19. 1981. Mind you, she did not debut as a hero. Instead, she was originally depicted to be an integral part of Mystique's plan to put the Avengers out of action and free her colleagues from prison. This brings us to the main contents of today's video, where we will be delving deeper into the very origins of Rogue and explore fascinating things about the character who has a rather prominent white streak running through her hair. Are you guys ready? Let's dive right into it. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Rogue's early life and her connection to the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. Let's be clear on one thing, a character as compelling and fascinating as Rogue is bound to have reimaginings and that should not really surprise you. Having said that, we will be taking a peek into her early life by exploring the 44th issue of the comic series Classic X-Men. The story opens up with a young Rogue having a total blast while riding on the steering wheel of her friend Freddy's cycle. Freddy is already at a crazy speed and asks Rogue if she is scared, but an exhilarated Rogue simply urges him to go faster. The cycle is seen hitting something on the way that makes Rogue land as smooth as a cat on the ground. They have reached Rogue's house and do not take notice that a car has arrived behind him. It is at that very moment, Freddy attempts to kiss Rogue who is initially taken aback by his actions and ends up pushing him away. She even tells him that she's having fun and that he should not ruin it. Freddy starts laughing and tells her that kissing does not ruin anything and that it's actually fun to kiss. He also tells Rogue to meet him later at the cliff before leaving on his cycle. Rogue attempts to act a bit differently, but Freddy is certain that she will will be there. After Freddy has left, Rogue is seen playing and sniffing flowers on the lawn. Meanwhile, a woman is seen stepping out of the car and approaching Rogue from behind. With her calling Rogue by her name, the audience realizes that the lady is none other than the shape-shifting mutant Mystique. Judging the duo by their conversation, it becomes clear that Rogue has been living with Mystique all this while. As the foster mother to Rogue, Mystique tells her that she is different from others and that she has to be strong and to stay away from boys. Rogue becomes outraged that her privacy is has been invaded, and she yells at Mystique telling her to shut up. She then flees from there crying and screaming that she too can befriend boys and everything that a normal girl is capable of having. No wonder Rogue wants to be normal. She wishes to love and play, but Mystique has other plans stored for her. She tells Rogue that her power is special and that it's particularly needed for a mission, but Rogue angrily runs away from there, refusing to listen to Mystique anymore. As Mystique witnesses Rogue running away from her, she continues to warn her to stay away from Freddy or else she will repent for her actions. By this time, Mystique's lover, Destiny, comes out of the house. Of course, she has been a witness to the whole thing, so she ends up stating to Mystique that Rogue, despite being a mutant, happens to be different from them and that she will reject their mutant brotherhood upon eventually realizing that they do so by embracing darker ways. This enrages Mystique, who points out to Destiny that while she respects her power of foresight, she must continue being a mother to Rogue, and that's by protecting her. Destiny replies that mothers often lose their daughters and that she should not guard Rogue so jealously. Mystique protests back by telling Destiny that she is not jealous and further expresses to Destiny that Rogue can have the boy because eventually she will be broken by her actions and that she will need Mystique even more. Back at the cliff, Rogue and Freddy are seen having a relaxing time with Rogue literally at the edge of the cliff. Freddy asks her to get away from the edge and come to sit next to him. Rogue grabs an old rotten rope and swinging over the cliff. Freddy tells her to leave that rope as only boys would swing on it and that too on a dare. Rogue asks him if any girl has ever tried swinging on it, with Freddy stating the obvious. Rogue grabs hold of the rope and starts swinging to and fro whilst mocking Freddy, telling him that now he has to save her. No wonder Freddy manages to catch her and tries to kiss her again, but Rogue pushes him away. Freddy is clearly disappointed as he has always seen Rogue take risks, so he dares her to kiss him. Rogue gives in and kisses Freddy while still holding onto the rope, with her lips 
touching Rogue's powers kick in and Freddy falls unconscious on the ground. As for Rogue, she continues swinging back and absorbing all of his memories or should we say reliving his life. Everything that he would have told her slowly and naturally in time, how he got a puppy for Christmas, his very first fireworks, his first cigarette, his first terror, his first loss. Rogue would have unlocked all his stories but now she will never know the pleasure of that journey. The moment their lips touch all of Freddy's memories were taken from him in just a split second. All of Freddy's flaws and desires, hopes and lies became hers all crammed into one brutal moment. Rogue lands on the ground herself next to an unconscious Freddy. She starts crying and it dawns upon her that for her to be acquainted with someone it is literally to pierce through that person's mind, possess it and then spit it out again. Of course this will never be love and she mourns at the fact that she will never be able to lead a normal life. For Rogue, a kiss is anything but a gentle thing. After she feels that Freddy's memories are fading and that he will soon wake up, she runs away from there, leaving Freddy to wonder what happened and why would a feisty girl like Rogue kiss him just once and then never talk to him again. Rogue comes back home to Mystique and Destiny. He starts being a complete chatterbox, first asking them what's there to eat as she's starving. Next, she tells them that it's a great day and asks them what the duo has been up to. Then, the smell of cookies catches her attention and she starts munching on them. Mystique is surprised by her daughter's erratic behavior and asks her if she is ill or something to which Rogue tells her that she wants to go on the mission that she had mentioned to her earlier. With Mystique informing Rogue that the mission will be dangerous, she says it's good, in fact it's great, and that she does not care. She is ready to do anything. The character of Rogue has had various other alterations over the years. We learned that her real name was Anna Marie and she was born to parents Owen and Priscilla in a hippie community in Caldecott County, Mississippi. Members of the commune, which included both Owen and Priscilla, attempted to use mysterious forces or, in other words, Native American mysticism in order to reach the spirit world known as Far Banks, which was heavily influenced by the very dreams of people on Earth. The repetitive crash attempts eventually resulted in the disappearance of Priscilla. Owen, visibly shaken by the experience, left his daughter under the care of Priscilla's sister, Carrie. As much as Carrie was authoritarian as a guardian, Anna Marie was an utter rebel, and in due course ran away from her home while she was only a young teen. Anna Marie also gained a nickname Rogue in the process. Rogue's meeting with Mystique was further explored in X-Men Unlimited Volume 1, Issue 4. If we pay attention to this particular retelling, here, Rogue's reported to have kissed a boy called Cody Robbins, an incident which ended up triggering her dormant mutant powers and sadly putting Cody in a state of coma. Of course, Rogue was absolutely traumatized by the whole experience and started donning full clothes that would cover every inch of her skin and prevent all possible of even an accidental touch. It was then that she met Mystique and fell under her sway. Mystique took her in as her daughter and raised Rogue with the sole purpose of using Rogue to fulfill her ulterior motives. Be it loneliness, despair, bitterness, or envy, Mystique turned every trait of Rogue into anger and eventually had her recruited onto the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. Rogue fought against many superheroes siding with the Brotherhood. In fact, as part of one of her first missions, she was sent to absorb the very powers of Miss Marvel and despite the Rogue's strong will and formidable powers, Rogue ended up absorbing her entire persona along with her power of flight and other aspects of her psyche. After absorbing the powers, memories as well as the personality of Miss Marvel, Rogue was given the order to overthrow the Avengers that led to her ambushing them at the Avengers Mansion. Rogue was successful in absorbing the very powers of Captain America as well as Thor, but was later forced to retreat. Post regrouping with the Brotherhood, she attacked Riker's Island to free Destiny, but the Avengers ended up overpowering them and it was only Rogue and Mystique who were able to escape from there. Rogue's story in X-Men the Animated Series Rogue was only 13 years old when she first kissed Cody and put him in a coma. That led to Rogue's father disowning her for being a mutant and Rogue ran away from home. It was then that she was discovered by the shape-shifting mutant Mystique at a bus station, who would take her in. Rogue would call her Mama, and Mystique adopted her as her own daughter. She taught her how to use her mutant powers so as to absorb the abilities and memories of other people and steal the powers of other mutants. It was through Mystique, the 
Myth Rogue joined the Brotherhood of Mutants and started working alongside members Avalanche, Pyro, Blob, and Mystique herself. The Brotherhood would use Rogue's special abilities to embezzle important documents and other valuable weapons for many, many years, planning to boost Rogue's power and at the same time get rid of her arch-rival Miss Marvel. Mystique put into motion her ultimate plan, have Rogue battle out Miss Marvel. However, not only did Rogue end up obtaining Miss Marvel's augmented reflexes, superhuman strength, and vulnerability in the power of flight, but she also put her into a permanent coma. Oh, in case we forgot to mention it earlier, while Rogue was absorbing Ms. Marvel's abilities, she also absorbed her personality, which began driving her insane, especially when Ms. Marvel's mind would attack her mentally and cause her to experience delusions of being haunted all while Rogue was awake. Of course, things became a tad too much for Rogue, and she ran away from Mystique and also left behind a brotherhood. It was Charles Xavier, who telepathically came in contact with Rogue post feeling her extreme levels of pain and suffering. Rogue finds her way to Professor X and he helps her erase the agonizing memories and restores her peace of mind. This changed Rogue and she became a student of the Professor, eventually joining the X-Men. Of course, Mystique was absolutely furious where she learned about Rogue while she vowed to get her back from Charles Xavier. She never really managed to do so. There was a time when Rogue traversed on her own all the way to Muir Island to undergo the treatment of Dr. Gottfried Adler and became a regular human being without any powers. A lot of things had been playing in her mind. She wanted to feel Gambit, touch him in exact words, and not hurt him while doing so. She also wished to have a love life similar to that of Jean Grey and Cyclops, but her powers of absorption obstructed her from having the life that she so badly craved for. So she felt the only possible way she could get what she really wanted was by getting rid of her powers. On her way to Dr. Adler's rogue crossed paths with Brotherhood of Mutant members Avalanche and Pyro at a bar. Rogue had stopped there for a drink and she did not remember who they were all thanks to Professor X erasing those memories from her mind. But Pyro actually thought that it was Mystique in disguise as Rogue and, and tried to hit on her. Of course, it was a failed attempt and Rogue ended up defeating both Pyro and Avalanche. As Rogue reached Dr. Adler's research center, she was oblivious to the fact that the real Dr. Adler had already been killed by the extremely powerful and ancient mutant Apocalypse, and it was Mystique who was impersonating Adler. Also, in case you didn't know, Mystique was working for Apocalypse after he threatened to harm Rogue and kill her if she did not make use of the process to alter unwary, gullible mutants into his slaves. Of course, Mystique did not want to use the cure on Rogue and tried her very best to talk Rogue out of it, but she had already made up her mind by then. Mystique sent Rogue away for an hour to rethink her decision, and with her gone, Apocalypse told Mystique to use the cure on Rogue because the mutant wanted Rogue to serve him as his servant. Mystique also realized that it was her chance to get back Rogue to her, so she tried using the cure on Rogue after she came back only to get interrupted by both Pyro and Avalanche, not realizing that it was Mystique who was disguised as Dr. Adler. The duo tried kidnapping Rogue, but she managed to defeat them yet again. By then, Cyclops, Jean Grey, and Professor X had already arrived there, and taking their aid, Rogue was able to save Dr. Adler from the duo of Pyro and Avalanche, not knowing that Adler in reality was Mystique. Rogue ultimately came to terms with her mutant powers and realized that they were more precious to her than not being able to touch another person and voluntarily did not go through with the process. She chose to go back to the mansion with Professor X, Jean Grey, and Cyclops. Mystique devised a sinister plan to reclaim Rogue. She went so far as to disguise herself as Carol Danvers, better known as Miss Marvel, and appeared in front of Rogue. Of course, this caused her to have painful mental flashes of Miss Marvel, memories that Professor X had erased from her mind, and she passed out screaming. Rogue woke up in the X-Men mansion screaming that she was being haunted by Carol Danvers in her dreams. The X-Men, especially Cyclops, Jean, and Gambit tried to make Rogue remember who Carol Danvers was and why she kept seeing her everywhere. But Rogue was unable to recollect things but the fact that Professor X had already erased those painful memories from her mind. Things started taking an ugly turn. Rogue almost ended up hurting her friends in the process to chase Carol Danvers away. In fact, it was too much on Rogue's part and she was pulled into the astral plane by the real Carol Danvers, who blamed her for taking away her life from her. Of course, Jean tried her very best to psychically calm Rogue, and upon doing so, realized that there were two presences inside Rogue's mind. Danvers made another appearance and told her to come and find her at the hospital where Rogue had initially put her in, and that she will get all her answers if she does what was being asked of her. Rogue rushed into the Midtown Hospital, where Mystique disguised as Danvers led Rogue into the room, where Danvers was in a 
coma. Witnessing Mystique change back from Danvers to her real self shocked Rogue to the core. Mystique eventually persuaded Rogue to absorb her memories so she could remember everything, but after doing so, Rogue learned that she was nothing but a weapon for Mystique to be used against Miss Marvel, and Rogue was furious. While the real Miss Marvel attempted to drag Rogue deeper into the bottomless pit of her own mind in the astral plane to claim both the mind and body of Rogue as her own, thanks to Jean for physically entering into Rogue's mind, helping her construct an unbreakable psychic cage to imprison the spirit of Miss Marvel inside her mind and shut her up. Doing this restored her peace of mind and Rogue disowned Mystique once and for all. Rogue was later seen visiting Carol Danvers at the hospital, having brought flowers for her. After she touched Danvers on the forehead and left, the EKG began to pulsate, indicating that Carol Danvers' brainwaves were active again. <laughs> Rogue in X-Men Evolution Voiced by Megan Black, the character's real name is never really revealed in the series. Here, she is reimagined as this unruly, extremely insecure goth teenager. Just by physically touching, Rogue is capable of absorbing the very life force, memories, characteristics, and powers of anyone, for that matter. It's also these powers that make her sullen, cynical, and reclusive in nature, but truth be told, she has this burning desire to get close to the people around her, but then again, her powers don't allow her to do so. You're series shows how Rogue was raised by the duo of Mystique and Destiny and in due course recruited into the Brotherhood of Mutants. Of course, Rogue left the Brotherhood post learning that they took care of her only to make her become a potential weapon for them. Her character is seen growing close to Cyclops and bonding over the duo's shared difficulty in not being able to control their powers. She develops feelings for him but with Cyclops being head over heels for Jean, Rogue's feelings for Cyclops are seen to wither and she ends up getting attracted by Gambit. The series portrays the character's energy of absorbing abilities rather strongly, they nearly drive her insane. Please know that here in the series, the powers that she absorbs don't really fade. When necessary, she can still use an already absorbed power and gain more control over it than its rightful owner. weirdest things you should know about Rogue's body. We'd like to begin this particular segment by stating that Rogue has always been a very unpredictable character, so don't be surprised as we unravel the most shocking things about her. Putting stress on the What If series, a certain issue had Rogue slay Thor by draining his powers. Naturally, this gave her the ability to wield Mjolnir the same way Thor could, and she ends up going on a killing spree, slaying many Avengers before being lured by Loki into attacking Asgard. Rogue eventually meets the spirit of Thor, who manages to persuade her into carrying on his mission. Upon being able to crush the army of Loki, Rogue is greeted as the new goddess of thunder by Odin. This proves that she is indeed worthy of the hammer. Next on the list happens to be the story of X-Men The End, where Rogue has not only learned how to control her powers, but in doing so, she has also been blessed with a child with Gambit. Yes, you heard that right, every bit of it. This version of Rogue bragged about a set of tribal tattoos on her very arm. Now, there's no denying that not only has Rogue had different versions of her character, but there have also been several universes, each hinting at a different version of Rogue. We are focusing on the ultimate version of Rogue, where she's seen enlisting in the Weapon X program to learn how to control her powers. She was eventually trained as a special agent that raised a bit of a conflict, especially with the X-Men. Now, the biggest revelation was that a team Rogue had inadvertently killed her own father when she tried to force himself on her and that's how her powers manifested in the first place. Why was Rogue such a powerful mutant? We will begin with her power absorption abilities. Rogue, simply by touching the skin of another human being, can drain the being's very essence by absorbing the memories, powers, and personality of that being. Imagine when it comes to an enhanced being, she ends up absorbing the psionic abilities too, making her capable of possessing the powers of many superhuman beings simultaneously. Don't be surprised when we tell you that Rogue has not only fought but also absorbed the powers of She-Hulk many times. Rogue literally literally went all green and big, whilst gaining a major advantage over every X-Men member, including the Russian mutant Colossus as well. Now, absorbing the strengths of mutant powers of others is fine, but have you ever heard of stacking them? Well, Rogue went to the extent of making use of every power that she has acquired all at once, thereby making her invincible. Just imagine her with a Claws of Wolverine, the armor of Colossus, even his strength for that matter, and the psychic abilities of Psylocke. Last but not the least, when you have a character who single-handedly took on a celestial. It displays her exceeding levels of strength that are just incomparable.
Marvelous appearances of Rogue in other media. The character of Rogue has been featured extensively and prominently, may we add so, in other media, making several appearances in TV and film adaptations of the X-Men comics. In the case of television, she has appeared in X-Men the Animated Series, X-Men Evolution, Wolverine and the X-Men, Marvel Anime X-Men, Ultimate Spider-Man, and Wolverine vs. Sabretooth. Speaking of movies, Rogue has appeared in X-Men X2, X-Men The Last Stand, and X-Men Days of Future Past, where her character has been played by the celebrated actress Anna Packman. Well, with this, we finally come to the end of our video. If you enjoyed this video, click on the like button and comment below about which other movie reviews you would want to watch. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel.